Hi everyone, hey, how's it welcome going? to the 13th, no, 12th, 12th, oh, I'm losing Lose track, count. <laughs> uh, episode of Web Antics TV and a very special episode, we have a special guest, Rod Jaka, and he is um, a Google Analytics Authorized Consultant in Canada, sorry, Australia, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, his company is panalysis.com, how do you spell it? P-A-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S. -S. There Analysis. you go. And Analysis. We'll, we'll, we'll link to it uh, <laughs> from, our, from our, but Rod um, works with um, all the different vendors in the space. He, he's of course an authorized consultant for our Google, uh, but he also works with Omniture and WebTrends and CoreMetrics and Unica and Urchin and, and I don't know, everybody else too. <laughs> yeah. so, so we're very excited to have Rod here today. And, um, we're going to kick off our episode, and all three of us are going to try and answer some questions. Yeah. OK, so uh, the, f the first question is from Suhas in Ganjar, uh, India. Uh, why my own site sh is showing as a referral site in the referring site <laughs> section? Mm -hmm. Good one. So, so, so this is I go to the top referring URLs report Work, in right. Google Analytics. And I'm seeing my own site in there, and what's the answer? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we thought we'd kick it off with Rod, since okay. you, uh, you probably have a lot of experience with this. Yeah. yeah what well, are some of the causes? Well, some of the causes are misconfiguration. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it could be that there are tags missing from various parts of the website, mm -hmm. particularly if you have a pop up with, a, say, an image or something like that, where a link goes back to the website from that, that can be treated as a self referring link. Also, things to watch out for are setting the domain names correctly. So if you are using the set domain oh, name, mm. to make sure that if you do have the dub 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 and the non dub 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 versions of your website, just to make sure that they are done correctly. Mm. Also, there could be things that you can do to prevent it, such as using the set uh, ignore referrer and adding or add ignored referrer. So you can tell your Google Analytics code to ignore all traffic that matches the various domains from within your site. Oh, okay. Yeah, and but, but the simplest one mm -hmm. that, that you should do before you add the no referrer is, is make sure all your landing page have the tracking code. So mm -hmm. any places Absolutely. that people enter your website, normally I notice that that addresses this problem quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have some of some more pesky things left and, and mm -hmm. the things Rod's outlined will help a lot. But make sure your landing pages are tagged correctly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one quick one. Um, Nikki, um, oh, I am asking the next question of because uh, Nick has a great, fabulous answer. Uh, it's from Bray in Devon, the UK. And it says, um, when I do a pivot report, example, keyword by landing page, is there any way to export more than five columns similar to the and limit equal 10,000 that can be used to get more than 5,000 rows of data? So can you get more than five columns in the, in the API? Uh, yes, through the API, and that's it. So f from the reports, you can't get more than five columns in the pivot table, but you can use the API and you get a lot more. Um, there's a lot of people who've actually built uh, Excel integrations with the API, mm. and it's really nice, because we just had a conference and I saw some great demos of people had uh, 10 column pivot tables from custom data directly from the API. So I would take a look at what we have. Uh, we have the app gallery, we can link to the Excel integrations. Probably one of them can help solve that. Yeah, like, uh, like Shuffle Point and some of these Shuffle guys. Shuffle Point, yeah, topics, yeah. excellent, 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 excellent analytics. Yeah, yeah excellent definitely. analytics. Okay, cool. good. We'll so, link so up. Yeah. look at the links in the blog post for this video, and and you'll be all set. Um, another question, Nick. Uh, I love some of the GA applications available in the gallery, but it seems many of them do not work. <gasps> you just recommended the gallery. I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, many of them do not work with the new async code, like the 4Q so survey So you mean they do actually work? They, did, they yeah. don't work with the async code. So we got to be a bit fair here. <laughs> yeah. If I want to use several of these apps, should I hold off on upgrading my GA code? Uh, and what does the future hold? Uh, swimming in data from Budapest in Hungary. Yeah, mm. I know. We Hello, swimming in data. So what, what's the answer? <laughs> we should go swimming in the, the, the hot spas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that, uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot of people. We want them all to migrate to async code, but realistically, some mm. companies are having a challenge moving over to that. A lot of these companies we've worked with to get their integrations working on a site, and typically that involves a lot more custom integrations. So in those cases, we recommend working with the company to see how their implementation works. Ideally, we'd love to move to a place where there's a unified way for everybody to set up integrations with the tracking code. Uh, we're just not quite there yet, um, but so only things are going to get better. So I would say work with the companies, uh, see what's required before you decide to invest or not, and over time we'll have even better uh, ways to integrate. And then Nick, in this case, um, Swimming was asking deliberately about, uh, specifically about the 4Q survey. Mm -hmm. Is that, I thought that's working with Async now. 
I, I don't remember the specifics. I think he okay. was working with them. They, they have a really unique way of being able to pass cookie data between domains and making sure the session data isn't uh, improper. Um, so you, you so would check work with, with that them. perceptions. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Fabulous. Great. So uh, question for you here, uh, Abhinash. Uh, this is from uh, Hello Guys. I want to read. I want to grant read-only access to my website optimizer experiments to other team members and business owners. Is there any way I can achieve this by not necessarily giving them admin access to my GA account? And this is from Jakob uh, Stevenich in UK. Yes, there, there are, I'm afraid that there are. There is no direct way that inside Google uh, Website Optimizer you can give read-only access like you can with um, Google Analytics. Uh, but uh, when I run into this issue, um, I give access by sending people screenshots. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's high tech. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm afraid that, that uh, you can't at the moment. Uh, but we'll pass this on to the, to the GWO team. Until then, screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> we actually linked uh, how to do screenshots in various browsers. I know. The previous episode, so uh, we might have to relink that. OK. So uh, the ne next question here is for you, Avinash. Uh, hi, guys. I'm using um, custom variables for identifying visitors with unique visitor ID, but I don't know how to cross this ID with all the GAA data I'm interested in. What is the best way to do it? Thanks from Marius. And this is from Julian uh, Marius. In Mauritius. Oh, Mauritius. Mauritius. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> from beautiful, Mauritius. beautiful <laughs> Mauritius. Um, um, so so before we, we answer the question, it's very important to share that uh, Google Analytics does not allow you to track personally identifiable information in any country in the world, <laughs> including Mauritius. So when you mention that you're identifying visitors with a unique visitor ID, please know that you have to be in compliance with the, the terms and conditions of Google Analytics where you cannot use any personally identifiable information. You can definitely use anonymous information and hash keys and all kinds of things um, to do this kind of tracking, but please be in compliance with the task. Okay, with that said, um, the best way to do this is to use um, advanced segmentation. You have the custom variable key and the custom variable value available to create segments within, um, within Google Analytics. So just create the advanced segment. Um, and you can use regex, contains, matches, whatever you want to use for, sure. uh, to match the values for your key. And then go and apply it to any report that you're interested in uh, in Google Analytics. And, and then that answers uh, your question about how to cross this ID with all the GA data you're interested in just in a small chance that you're not able to find uh, the, the data you want to cross with within a standard reports, create a custom report, then apply the segment. So first thing, segment. Second thing, apply it to a standard report or a custom report, and the sun will shine again in Mauritius. <laughs> But don't also, also don't forget you've got the API, and you can yes. you can create segments on the fly through the API. So it depends on what the, the output should look like, but that is certainly possible. Especially if you want to automate this process, and then you want to do it again and again. Yep. Yeah. The, API the API is, is, is yep. perfect. OK, good. So a so question um, here, a simple question. Uh, and it says, sales from the long tail keywords, um, which are searched by the end users in, Google, in the Google uh, search engine, uh, actually, I'm going to rephrase this. So what, what Suhas Ganjre in India wants to know is that um, in Google Analytics for the longest time, when you look at the AdWords reports, the keyword that you saw in the AdWords reports for your paid search campaigns were the keywords that you had bid on. And what uh, Suhas wants to know is how do you know the keyword that the person actually clicked on or, or, or the keyword that uh, resulted in the ad showing up in the in the Google Analytics. So we call that the user query. So how do you know the user query, not the keyword that was bid on? So Nick, there's a simple way to do this. Yeah, so there's a report uh, under traffic sources. If you go to traffic sources, AdWords, keywords, and then there's a drop down box called match search query. It'll show you the actual search that people did, and then you can compare that to the actual keyword that you bid it on. And, and compare the difference between the mm -hmm. two. So there's definitely exactly. a report for that. So in the keyword report, just uh, click on the two drop downs that are on top of the AdWords keyword report. And in there, under the AdWords section, you'll find matched query type. That's exactly mm -hmm. what you're looking yeah. for. Sure. And so no more hacking JavaScript code. It's, that's, that's exactly that's, that's right. Great. This yeah. is news to me. I'm, I'm, great, I'm, I'm very pleased. Exactly. <laughs> We've had this for six months. <laughs> so just look for the matched query type and no hacking for JavaScript. And it's something that I was quite upset for a very long time that we did not have in Google Analytics. So I'm rather pleased that, mm, that it is available. Mm. I guess it's a very important thing. Yes, very absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. Great. So a uh, question for you, Avinash. Our company sends out thousands of newsletters. These contain links to the site and links to advertisers. I'd like to see the clicks on those links in GA. Links to the site are easy using link tagging. But what about the links to our advertisers? 
And so this is from Peter uh, uh, Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Yeah, in, from Eindhoven. I know the, and Peter is a, is a great question. And and Peter, here's the simplest solution. And and, and I, I I realize it's a bit bit different, but. But when I run into this problem, I simply make sure that all the links that are going to other people, I use them, create them using Bitly, which is a URL shortener, or goo.gl, which is our the Google's URL shortener. And so what you do is you say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to encode that link to the advertiser as a redirect, and when the person clicks on that link and goes to your advertiser to their website. Um, that click is captured by the redirect they're using. It's stored, and it's very easy for you to get access to. So, so this is sort of my simple recommendation to you to use a URL shortener to do it. Of course, if you hire a guy like <laughs> Rod, he can probably build this for you, <laughs> where whereby a click in the in the email first goes to your server, it's captured by your redirect server, and from then on, it goes either to your website or it goes to the advertiser website. So you can build this this system, if, especially if you do this a lot, um, hire somebody technical to, to do that for you and the data gets collected. Um, but if you want to do it quickly, just want to experiment with it, um, use bit.ly or geo.gl and, and both do exactly the same thing. It's just that you're doing it on somebody else's server uh, to do the real, that's, that's very important. Um, and for the rest of the people who are listening to this uh, video, uh, in these scenarios, it's very important that you add the campaign tracking parameters to the links that are coming back to your site. Mm because that will make sure Google Analytics will put it in the other bucket, which is where all the campaigns are, and you're able to analyze it. So don't, don't forget to add the tracking parameters mm. as well. Got a, got a possible easy solution actually just come to mm -hmm. mind. You could actually link to an iframe on your website, put the Google Analytics code Send inside the, the, the outer frame, and have the page for the advertiser load in the inner frame. Once that had finished, you could then do a, a URL swap where the iframe effectively disappears and the user would be none the wiser. So you so know, that might you, get around you, you know why we love Rob. <laughs> right, he, thinks <laughs> <laughs> he thinks of crazy things. He thinks of crazy things. Completely untested. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I actually think that might work. Yeah. That might work. Yeah. Again, uh, you can go from the simple to to the sort mm. of the medium to the little bit more complicated, but it works. It, mm. it, so there are there are options here. So we got next question from Mike in Colorado, and it and it's a good question. It says, um, I ran across a blog post that refactored the async code. I don't like this. I don't like refactoring <laughs> don't code. <laughs> but for those of you that don't know what refactoring means, it means changing the code around to make it more readable, a bit more usable. Yeah, but I don't like that. Anyway, read mm. um, and then he gives out a URL for the website. Um, is it recommended to use this refactored code? Is there any reason why the analytics team doesn't use some of these JavaScript techniques? So, so essentially, Mike is, is alluding to the efforts that we put, rigorous efforts, into making sure that our JavaScript code is hyper-optimized as much as possible. But in addition, if, if he is optimizing the refactoring the code, Nick, uh, what's the What's the, you know, walking the fire going on here? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's JavaScript. And if you take it and you manipulate it, it's up, you know, you're, you're going off on your own uh, tangent. And if it doesn't work, it's not our fault. You kind of broke it. So what we try to do is uh, we build the code. Don't, don't jailbreak your, your, your JavaScript like you jailbreak your iPhone. <laughs> so we, we try to make the JavaScript work across as many browsers as possible. Yes. Uh, I looked at the article, and a lot of their stuff was on reducing the size of the JavaScript from 400 bytes to 200 bytes. So uh, they're not kilobytes, those are bytes. Um, oh, it's and so, so it's very tiny. And something to, to remember is this file is heavily cached. And so what that means is if you go on any page that has Google Analytics on the internet and you download the ga.js file, for any other website you go to, while it's still in your cache, you'll just get that locally. Oh, I see, I see. So Maybe it's not, it's not even, even a problem. It's not even a problem. And because Java browser, uh, JavaScript is really much faster than it used to be, that, I mean, the additional size of the page, it's not going to reduce any latency by reducing it. So really, you know, we wrote it to be as readable and simple as possible. And if you want to take and do other things, we don't recommend it. But I mean, you could do it. It's you up know. to you. Yeah. Well, what, do, yeah. what do you think of the action script source code for the Flash object? Would looking at that source code help them? Uh, that one's a little bit more complicated because it has mm. to work in different environments. Mm. It's actually a, li a little bit bigger. Mm. Uh, and GA.js was a little bit more optimized. It's more just because action scripts compiled down, mm. whereas mm. GA.js is a script that runs. Mm. So cool. it's a little bit different. Okay. All right, here's a question for Pedro Gon Goncables in uh, Lisbon, Portugal. And Pedro asks, simple question. I know that a visit is a session, but if a user is inactive on your site for 30 mm. minutes or more, any future activity will be attributed to the to a new session. 
A visit can last all day if there is no 30 minutes of inactivity. Thanks. So I guess what Pedro is asking, Rod, is, mm -hmm. is do we cap off the amount of, uh, the length of a visit in the sense mm -hmm. that if somebody keeps clicking every 28 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, would the visit last nine days if the person did that for nine days? Every yes. 29 minutes, they made a click on the site. I'd be very worried about the person that does do <laughs> that. I don't know quite what would drive somebody to do that, but yes. There's certain <laughs> sites, maybe. <laughs> <that. laughs> Not every 29 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it won't. It, it won't exceed the span of a day. Sessions cap off at the end of the day. And but also be, bear in mind there is an upper limit to the number of transactions that any any one session can have, and it's around about five hundred. I don't think there's actually a fixed amount, but it's around about five hundred page views or total transactions, including right. events, etc. So the answer to that is technically yes, it could happen, but it'd be a very rare case. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So so trust us, the defaults are working fine, yeah. Pedro. <laughs> and, and one thing to keep in mind is that. Uh, at midnight of the, the time zone that the account is configured, we'll stop every session. So everything is bounded by a day. So if somebody does do this behavior, at the end of the day, it will be a new session. All right, all right, so here's, here's a question, um, the next question, um, and it's from Adrian in New York City. And Adrian's question is, if I look at my custom report with source medium and, the tot and total goal completions, the number of conversions does not match all traffic sources, uh, report with default visits conversion segments. It's inflated by six percent. Mm. That that means it's accurate, by the way. If it's six percent only, anyway. It's six percent <laughs> statistically significant. Yeah, yeah. That's the question. Uh, but how could that be? So yeah. so so Nick, uh, what do you think is is happening here in this in this scenario? No, it's a good question. We before the show, we actually went and looked at this report and tried pulling them together, and they ma they matched up one completely. for one completely. So I think in the, in the standard reports, in the standard reports, and and we applied the advanced company. segmentation. Yeah, we we looked at it, custom yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything. We, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think what's happening here is because you're using advanced segments, you might be hitting sampling. And when we do sampling, sometimes we return a, a confidence interval as well. And so you might not be getting all your data. You might be getting a sample of the data, and that's what's causing this discrepancy. So sampling could possibly do it because in the standard reports, we did not notice this when we ran right. it. Mm. Uh, how about um, it could could there be any other thing this uh, person could do? Well, maybe shorten the date range. Bring your date ranges down. Try a day, and if it matches up, try two days. And if it gets to say a month, it doesn't out. match out. It might be just the volume of data. Okay, yeah. cool. And that, that, that'll cause sampling. Right. And and and, and to, to, mm. to be completely clear, it's not it's not clear what this six percent if that's a statistically significant like uh, difference. Exactly. So six percent exactly. might be totally normal. Yes, yes exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got another good question from India, and, and thank thank goodness we've got Rod here for the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great question for him, and the question is why do why should people use web trends? Why indeed? Okay. <laughs> why should Ooh. people use web trends, uh, Adobe Site Catalyst, etc., as they're all related to web analytics? Is there a big difference between Google Analytics? and other analytics services. If yes, then which analytics tools will give the best results? So I, I, don't, I don't like the last part of it, so but, but the rest of it. Yeah. So let me answer this, because it's very, it's very logical. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like how you measure keyword performance. It's not the keyword that costs the most, which is the best. It's the keyword that returned the highest return on investment. <laughs> so Google Analytics is free, so yes. it's infinite ROI. Yeah, so infinite of, ROI, course, yeah. of course, of yeah. course, you got to go. <laughs> good, good answer, Nick. Yeah, very good answer. Yes. Nick good will answer. get a bonus from Google today for pimping Google Analytics. <laughs> <laughs> but Rod, what do you think? You, well, you, you work with all vendors. Yeah, yeah, and it comes back down to what does, what's it going to do? I mean, what are we measuring? Mm -hmm. Now, in Google Analytics, you've got most of the tools that you need for most use cases of yep. web analytics. And I, I think that it's very difficult to compete on uh, feature for feature on that area. However, there are cases where something like Web Trends or, or Omniture, or mm -hmm. Adobe slash Omniture, or Unic, or any of these other products have a sp something that's done a specific way that makes the data better for the client or can, yes. can solve a particular problem. There are various other parts to this, but really what it comes down to is what are we measuring, why are we measuring it, and how can we ex surface that data and extract it in a way that's appropriate to the business? I think it makes sense. So it depends on your needs. I mean, really quickly, if I were mm -hmm. to say, you know, if you want to have an easy to access data warehousing option for your web analytics tool and mm -hmm. you have um, the funds to buy it, then you know Omniture and WebTrends have great data warehouse options that you could purchase, as an example. Mm -hmm. Or Unica has such a tight integration with uh, campaigns online and offline. Uh, well, NetInsight has the, has such a great integration for campaigns. You might be building using Unica, the, the parent mm -hmm. company's yep. solutions that in many cases, in those kinds of cases, 
uh, you're better off using NetInsight, which is Unicus Web Analytics solution rather than Google Analytics. So, mm -hmm. so again, it depends, and those are some specific scenarios where people might go with those tools. And Absolutely. It, it, it but really Google Analytics okay. will solve 95% 90, of most cases that I've come across. So, okay. so Nick, you, is this, um, this question is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I can answer it for sure. But the question is, if um, I uh, from Rishi in Michigan, I have a question about transaction columns and event tracking. Is GA only tracking transactions that happened in the same session, or is this a pan session metric? Um, same sessions, Rishi. So that's that's the answer. Great. Right. Here's the next one. This one's for you, Nick. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, from Peter again from Eindhoven in the Netherlands. How can I get the funnel data from a goal collected in my API? Uh, for now, I'm I'm able to get starts, completions, and values for each of the goals. The data for each of the steps within a funnel is not available. Uh, greetings, Peter. So, so Nick, what's the solution here? Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, as he mentioned, we don't uh, expose the funnel visualization report through right. the API. Uh, what we do expose is actual the navigation summary report, which mm -hmm. shows you from a particular page what was the next page you went to, and you can stitch those together to create the same type of effect oh. as the funnel visualization. Mm -hmm. And actually, our friends at Paddytrack uh, actually created an application that actually does this for oh, you. Oh, I remember, and yes. So not yes. only can you, it's, it's actually pretty interesting because not only can you get the funnel steps, but you can actually apply segments to the funnel. So you can say how many new versus return visitors went through my series of steps. Oh, excellent. So excellent. Uh, we'll link to the application. It's pretty cool. It's a free app. And uh, and otherwise, you can use the API and, and recreate the funnel visualization report. Yeah, but but I actually, I've used the PettyTrack mm -hmm. application. It's really good. And, and I think it's free, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. At least for now, it's free. Um, you should absolutely try that, Peter. Um, um, especially segmenting, which you can't even do in Google Analytics, is, yeah. mm -hmm. is a fabulous side benefit. OK, next question. Uh, this question's for you, Rod, here. Uh, <laughs> so uh, in the traffic sources section, what is other traffic? <laughs> what kind of traffic sources get included in other traffic, email, et cetera? Mm -hmm. And this is from Suhas in India. OK, so come back to basics with, with how Google Analytics does what it does. So if you, come to Google, to, if you go to your website from Google, Google Analytics will recognize that you've come from a search engine. The same for the other you know, sites like Yahoo, AltaVista, et cetera. There's a, there's a known number of search engines, about 30 or 40 from memory. If you site doesn't fall into that, like the site you're coming from, it will be treated as a referring link, provided that there is actually a, a referrer to that page. And this is all getting a bit kind of complex, I know. The other is where there is no referring page or campaign tracking parameters in place. Now, where would that come in? Well, that, where, that would come in if I sent an email to you and you had clicked on the link in the email and gone to the website. So that would fall into the other group. Well, the solution there is to tag the link in the email so we can say that came from the email. The lesser known cases are where somebody has come in and clicked on a link in a PDF document or a Word document where the referring information is not transferred across, or, or where they've come in from a link in a secure site, so something that's under the HTTPS protocol, the referring link is not transferred across. So there's a lot of ways we can juice that, but when it comes down to it, we can infer that once we've done the best with that tagging, that they are the direct visitors to our website with some margin of error. Yeah, and then make sure that you, you do a good job, uh, You 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 do a consistent job of tagging all your campaigns, especially mm -hmm. uh, display affiliates, email, and other sorts of campaigns yep. that you're doing, uh, because it'll get you a better perspective of what is in the other category. Um, if, if you have a blog, for example, Google automatically tags FeedBurner. That's, you're going to find it in other, right? So campaigns, make sure you tag correctly. Mm -hmm. So here's a, a question um, for um, Nick. And the question is, hello, ninjas. <laughs> Whoa, awesome. It's the ninja slice. <laughs> That's how we slice data. <laughs> I get those little stars. <laughs> <laughs> I just discovered uh, the awesome visualize button. Whoa. Florian, it's been out for two years. Man. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so <laughs> awesome it has its own video. <laughs> yeah, it, did. Okay. it does, it does. Um, I find it so useful to get uh, insights from my keyword reports. However, this magic button disappears <laughs> with my lovely advanced segments. Is there a way? for me to see my non-branded keywords there. Um, so it's from Florian in France. Um, so Nick, there is a way to solve this problem because of your hard work. The API. Yay. All right. No, uh, yeah, so it's not, you can't use the advanced segments in motion charts. Um, but through the API, you can apply advanced segments. And then there's an actual API for the motion charts. And uh, I actually wrote a little sample app that brings the two together. And so you might use that as sample code to build your own or hire a developer to build it out for you. So it's possible through the API. Uh, not, it's a great feature request through the product. Yeah, so segmented motion charts 
uh, are possible in the API, and Nick is going to add a link to the blog post that we're writing here, so you can play with the, the tool that he has built, because it's wonderful, fabulous. I don't think we're going to ever underplay the power of the API. It, it, it just opens up so much. Yeah, so the answer is like all our questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Avinash, here is a fantastic question for you <laughs> from Nick, but from Yorkshire in the UK. Okay. Uh, I have a keyword report I use to monitor keyword performance by source and medium with drill down to keyword campaign product. Why do the revenue and product revenue metrics show different figures? I added product revenue as revenue and it's zero pounds at the product level. Right, so Nick, there are two, two, so two interesting things to understand. Uh, revenue that you see in Google Analytics includes tax and shipping that you're charging. If you're sending the data into Google Analytics, it includes tax and shipping. Product revenue is a pure number. It does not include tax and shipping. So for those numbers to be different is, is not uh, uncommon for that exact same reason. Uh, but in this case, what you're doing is um, you're, you have created a custom report with a custom drill down of keyword campaign and product. And while it is possible for you to do this within custom reports, uh, the data model, it, it sort of intersects with the data model that is available in Google Analytics. And you've created um, a join, an intersection, a union, a, a, a thing within your custom report that actually um, is, is, um, is not configured in the data model for Google Analytics to provide. So you're, you're seeing zero. It's not because there's anything wrong in the data collection or anything, but in the custom report you have created, that's not, um, that's not available. So, so what I encourage you to do is, because this drill down particular model is not available, the data is still available by keyword, by campaign, and by product. You can see revenue. Um, so, so when you run into these kinds of issues, um, remove, uh, try a different drill down, or try to run the report without a drill down, and you'll get the exact same data. Um, so that's the thing that I would recommend. In the rare cases when you run into issues where a, a particular flow of data that you're trying is unsupported by the data model that's in the Google Analytics app. And of course, um, as always, API. API. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. question uh, for you, Avinash. Here. Oh, okay. Uh, so, why doesn't Google Analytics provide unique visitor data? What? In the last Analytics TV, Avinash, you <laughs> were raving about using unique visitors as a metric. Problem is, Google Analytics doesn't provide such data for any of the traffic sources. Why the hell not? <laughs> oh my goodness, Mark, you gotta be polite, buddy. No. Oh. Um, but the data is available in Google Analytics. Um, uh, unique visitor counts, which are which are the favorite uh, of the three that are available in Google Analytics, are only available in custom reports. Mm -hmm. So you would do exactly what we were encouraging, <laughs> encouraging Nick not to do, which is you would create a custom report, track the dimension traffic sources over, go to your metrics column, um, metrics um, uh, folder, drag over visits and unique visitors. Boom, you're in business. So all you need to do in order to get unique visitors is to use a custom report. And, 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 and I, I want to highlight this, that what is amazing and incredible about Google Analytics and unique visitors in Google Analytics is you can view them across any time ranges that you want, including random ones. Um, and in Google Analytics, without adding extra things to the code or begging your vendors for more props and other things, you will be able to segment the unique visitor data. So the unique visitor metric that is created and available in Google Analytics custom reports is actually segmentable. So go try it, and, and um, you'll be really pleased with the amount of power um, that's available. But custom reports, dimension, to tra all traffic sources, metric unique visitors. Yeah, and, and uh, something to mention here on why isn't it just in every report, and the thing is, is because for every report that we have it, it's being recomputed on the fly. Right. Otherwise we can't exactly. get otherwise we get daily uniques and that's not what we want. We want absolutely yes. uniques. Yes. So yes. because we're recalculating all that data really fast, it's not in the standard reports, you actually have to explicitly put it in a custom report. Agreed. Agreed. Great point, Nick. Okay. So here's a question from Chris Leon in Richmond, Virginia. And Chris asks, um, I only want to view product page views when I filter using a regex, regular ex, regex expression at the bottom of the report. It works perfectly. When I try to create an advanced segment using the same regex, pages, matches, regex, et cetera, um, it includes pages outside the regex. Why? So the, the big question here is why is it when you apply a filter at the bottom of a report, the data is different than when you apply an advanced segment? Right. And so it, it's really in, important to understand the difference between the two, even though the, they look the same, they're quite different. Mm -hmm. When you run a report, you get a list of rows of data. When you apply a filter, we only remove data from that table that we returned. 
So nothing happens on the back end. It's just purely uh, uh, something that makes it easier to visualize what you're looking at. When you apply advanced segment, what happens is we actually go back to the original data and recompute the data for the segment and then present that in the reports. Advanced segments happen at the session level. And so mm -hmm. for each session, there's a bunch of pages. So if you're creating an advanced segment that includes a particular page, we find all sessions that have the page, recompute the dimensions and metrics, and return that back into the report. Mm -hmm. So how they work is fundamentally yeah. different, uh, and that's why you're seeing what, how it's happening. And, and I, I have to tell you that, that if you did not understand what Nick said, you should, you should just rewind back two minutes and listen to it again, because mm -hmm. uh, this question comes up a lot, and, and Nick's explanation is, is extremely clear. And, mm -hmm. and it's actually important that you understand um, what he said, because it's, it's actually pretty important. So, so thanks very much, Nick. I actually did a video on this that oh, explains did? a little bit how oh, it works through our API, so we'll, we'll maybe it can it. help a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Uh, for you, Avinash. Hi, Nick and Ash. Recently, my site got new tracking code from a different account because old tracking code is not attached to my AdWords account. Question is, how do I export data from the old account and import it to the new one? Thanks. And this is from Aziz Rahao in Indonesia. Wow. Yoga, yoga, Yogarta. Yoga Yakarta, Indonesia. Yoga Yakarta. Yoga Yakarta. There you go. The Australian <laughs> knows how to say it. Um, actually, uh, Aziz, there, there is no way to do this today, and 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 I I would hazard a guess that it wouldn't be possible to do it um, anytime soon, if if ever. And it's because the, the the structures of the sites and and things evolve so much that trying to plunk out data, old data, and and squeeze it into what exists now in terms of your site and data uh, would actually cause a lot of unintended uh, harm and consequences to your data. So, so this is probably not going to be possible. I, I understand that there are some use cases where, where you might um, find this to be useful. And, and when that happens, I would strongly encourage you to use the API. Because, because you're able to pull the data, you're able to pull the new data, you can match it together, do all kinds of crazy things, mm. including with some of our applications. You can automate this process and then your dashboards and reports um, that you've created with a mishmash of the old and the new data, our, our applications that we have in the app gallery can automate the process of producing those metrics and reports. So I encourage you to explore that path rather than trying to sort of bring it out and shove it back into the new account within Google Analytics. Great. So, so here's a question, uh, another question from, let's see, uh, from Pandu in Jakarta, um, or, or, oh, oh, here we go, I'm sorry, I missed a question from Christian in Windsor, on mm -hmm. Ontario, and this question is for Rod, perfectly placed for Rod. Okay. And um, in, what Christian is asking is he's geo-targeted AdWords for 90 locations, each location is two campaigns, one search, one content, that point to a unique landing page. I'm tired already. <laughs> it's pretty complex. I, I, can, I can only link one AdWords account to one analytics account, but I have five AdWords account to the same site. Uh, Any suggestions? Yes. Rod? Yes, well, technically this can be done, but not by the user interface. So what has to happen is you actually need to talk to um, a support person, and the unfortunately, the, well, fortunately for us, but probably a little bit different for everybody else, is to go through a, a authorized partner. So talk to either your account words uh, manager, who can organize it, or talk to one of the Google authorized and consulting partners, and they can organize that for you. Exactly, so just go to bit.ly slash GAAC, and you'll, you'll end up on a page, a landing page for all, uh, that lists all our GACs around the world. Um, and if you're, of course, um, in Australia, which you are not, you're in Canada, <laughs> you would hire Rod to do this work. Um, all right, Nick, question directly for you from Pandu in Jakarta, or popular in Indonesia, the second yeah. one, yay. Um, hi Nick, all current visits from non-campaign slash referral links clicked on Hootsuite and other desktop apps for Twitter belong to the direct visits buckets, um, in parentheses, UTM, SCR equal parentheses, direct close parentheses, close parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> this invites the round of direct visits, the range you to get around it. I can answer this one. Oh, uh, you should answer this. Exactly, because I tweet a lot, and Rod, you too. How do you solve this? So, so the way we solve it is that um, so here's, here's essentially what's happening. Um, uh, uh, according to many people who've done studies, around 70% of Twitter and Facebook usage happens in applications and not on the website. So if you, if you tweet a link out, um, if the person clicks on the website, of course you get a referrer. You know it came from twitter.com. Mm -hmm. But of course, 70% of the people who are using application, I use Spaz and, and uh, you're using Hootsuite. Um, if you click there, there's no referrer, it goes in direct as, as per mm -hmm. what um, 
we learned already. So in this case, what I do is I use a URL shortener called awesome, or you could use any other URL shortener what you want uh, that you want. And what happens is when I shorten the link, it automatically adds Google Analytics tracking parameters, campaign tracking parameters to the link. So, so all I do is still just click the URL shortener, boom, I get a link, it's tagged with tracking parameters. Now what happens is regardless of whether the person clicks on a web page, Twitter, or whether they click in an application Hootsuite, the data is nicely, cleanly collected, put into the My Campaign uh, reporting, and I know exactly how many people are coming from links that I am tweeting out. So use a URL shortener that adds automatically the tracking parameters or manually add the UTM source, medium, and what's the third one? Campaign. Campaign. Um, uh, parameters to your URLs and you're in business. It's, it's really as simple as that. Yeah, and reduce the other. That, as we said before, when the other is exactly. untagged campaigns, a lot of, lot of traffic in there. Okay, so that, that's the last question. Yay! That's this <laughs> exciting, awesome, long episode of Web Analytics TV. We did get some feature requests. I want to thank Ben from Yo Will in the UK, and Chris Leon from Richmond, Virginia, and... Uh, Who's that one guy? We want to we want to thank oh Mashizel in Tampa, Florida, <laughs> and we want to thank Seth in Lincoln, Nebraska. All of these wonderful people shared feature requests that they want to see built into Google Analytics. We'll make sure that we send it to the product managers for the Google Analytics team, and and hopefully they'll get prioritized higher. Thank you very much for being with us on this episode. I want to thank Ra Nick and Rod, thank our you. extra thank special you. and one-time only guest <laughs> on Google Analytics TV. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Please go to the door uh, to the moderator page, submit your questions, and rank other questions as well. Sure. Take, Take care. care. Take care.